All right, welcome to the state tax lesson. We, in this, we're not going to be going over like state tax returns, uh, like how to do them, anything like that. But rather, we're going to be talking about the states where the taxes are not really helpful to our efforts. Taxes are never helpful to our efforts, right? So if these states are on our list, it means they have taxes of some kind. Um, most S corporations don't pay federal tax or state tax at, uh, on the actual S corporation tax returns. All of that is done through the personal tax returns of the owners. So if this video features a state, it means that that state uh, has some kind of special S corporation tax. And we really need to make sure that we're factoring that into our calculations when we're pitching S corporations to prospects. And that's kind of the purpose of this is I'm going to go through uh, several states and some slides that are going to have calculations. And, and really these slides are, are aids that can help you when you are pitching things in those states to kind of quantify uh, what, the, what the real savings are after the state tax issues. And, and you'll see what I mean here in just a second whenever I get started. If you don't have clients in these states, then this whole video may not apply to you. Uh, so I'm not making an exam for this uh, that everyone has to pass. And in fact, you're not required to watch uh, you know, all of this. But I would encourage you to do so. Because what it does is it kind of shows you how some of the states think about S corporations and, and things that could happen in any state if, if a state legislature decided to change the way that they look at these things. So it's, it's a good video to watch. I would encourage you to watch it. But again, I'm not placing an exam with it because uh, it, that wouldn't necessarily be fair. Um, so let me kind of get started here. I'm going to start with the first state. And the way that I'm doing this is I'm starting with the kind of what I think are the worst states. And then as I go, uh, things get better and better to the point where some of these states, while they do have taxes, they're not, they're not big game changers. Make sense? All right, let's get started. So we're going to start with Tennessee. And I'm going to come kind of right out and say it, that Tennessee kind of sucks. Uh, they have clearly figured out how they can profit from the S-Corp election. And in Tennessee, you're only going to be recommending S-Corps when the income is below, like the net income is below $160,000 or so. After that, it becomes a problem where another kind of entity would actually be better uh, because the savings from the from the self-employment tax isn't that high. So what Tennessee created is something called the Tennessee excise tax on S-Corps. It's 6.5% it's of net income. So once your clients pass about 128,000 of, of income, they begin to see very diminishing returns because the big part of self-employment tax caps at $128,000. However, this Tennessee excise tax never caps out. It is 6.5% strong the entire time. I believe this, uh, you know, Tennessee and probably New Hampshire are probably the two most painful states. But as you can see, there is a big opportunity in the 60000 So right in here, uh, $60,000, uh, $2,600 saved all the way down to, you know, maybe $150,000. This is still a realm in which you can operate despite the, the tax. So the way that this spreadsheet is set up, it shows you the income range. It shows you the minimum salaries based on the officer's compensation matrix. Uh, your salaries may need to be higher, of course. This is the minimum. But if you were using the minimum, what the self-employment tax savings before all this Tennessee stuff, what it would be. Then I'm showing you what the Tennessee excise tax is on each of these income ranges and then what the real savings after the excise tax is. So that's kind of a way to use this spreadsheet is for anybody who's, who's coming to you, you can kind of keep this handy, especially if you live in Tennessee, and kind of think to yourself, my real range where I can use this 
to great effect to sell bookkeeping and to help me with my bookkeeping practice is somewhere in the $60,000 all the way to the $160,000 range. Now let's say somebody came in and they make $20,000, but they absolutely plan to be in this range next year. Well, I don't know that I would let that stop me then because even at the even at the $20,000 or $30,000 range, there's savings above and beyond what the Tennessee excise tax is. So I think I would still encourage them to do this. I'm just saying for the real sweet spot of the savings piece, it's probably more, you know, in, in these in the sixty to hundred and sixty thousand dollar range. That makes sense? So that's Tennessee. And that, you know, it, I can tell you this, if Tennessee is as bad as it gets, you know, then there's there's probably pretty good hope for the rest of the states, right? I mean there this basically means there's there's not a lot of states where uh, you shouldn't do S corporation at all because it's prohibitive. Now later on, I'm going to show you a city where that may actually be the case. But uh, let's let's move on to the next state, and I'll I'll kind of show you a little bit more about how these work. So New Hampshire, New Hampshire is my next state, and you know frankly, it's all kinds of bad too. But um, and in some cases, we could think that it is worse than Tennessee. You know, New Hampshire and Tennessee are probably really more in a tie. The reason New Hampshire is actually after Tennessee, meaning it's a little less bad, is because New Hampshire has passed some laws that in the future, the the New Hampshire corporate tax rate is going to go down a little bit. And so it's it's getting a little bit better. And I think what that means is New Hampshire has recognized that this is a this is a problem that charging businesses uh, a corporate tax is, is kind of a pain. Here's the thing about New Hampshire. It actually charges this not just to, to S-Corps. It charges this tax, this New Hampshire corporate tax right here, it charges it to sole proprietorships, partnerships, everyone. So to think of that S-Corporations are the only one getting penalized is a little bit unfair because really everyone's getting penalized and that's why I say I think New Hampshire's got to wake up at some point and say this is a this is a crazy tax to put on everybody uh, New Hampshire does not have a personal income tax so I think this is a way that they're raising money but my point is don't if you live in New Hampshire the S corporation still wins hands down because everyone has to pay this tax the reason I put this slide together is is because you still needed to know that the tax exists, especially if someone says, well, what about the New Hampshire corporate tax? You don't want to get you know, derailed in your sales pitch because I didn't teach you about this. Your answer to that is, well, everyone pays the New Hampshire corporate tax. Sole proprietorship, business, uh, partnerships, everyone does. So my, my S-Corp option still saves you a ton of money versus what the others are going to save you. I've shown this savings box over here as, as kind of the net of these things so that you under, understand what the net really is. But if you're comparing an S-Corp to a partnership to a sole proprietorship, the S-Corp still wins hands down because really this savings still applies because they still have to pay these taxes over here. New Hampshire has two different taxes. One's called the New Hampshire corporate tax. The business profit tax is, is another name for it. And then the enterprise tax. The enterprise tax kicks in um, at like it kicks in at two hundred thousand of revenue or one hundred thousand dollars of profit distributions. I'm kind of guessing here at where I think most businesses would probably run into it. The New Hampshire business profit tax, the corporate tax, does not kick in until you hit fifty thousand dollars of gross income. So somewhere in here, probably this kicks in. Businesses that are smaller than fifty thousand dollars don't pay that. That makes sense. So. There's some nuances here in New Hampshire. Get used to this slide a little bit because if you live in New Hampshire, get a little more than used to it. Kind of look these things up and see if you can uh, get your arms completely around them. But, you know, while New Hampshire is, is prohibitive, it's prohibitive against everyone. And thus, it still makes our S Corporation a huge winner whenever we're trying to figure out what kind of entity most of these operators should be. Make sense? All right. Let's move on to our next state. So the story of New York, New York's our next state. The story of New York is not really about the state, but it's about the city. If you're anywhere other than New York City, you're paying the state franchise tax, which is not that big a deal. As you can see on the slide here, New York franchise tax is piddly. Lots of states have piddly little fees like this. 
But if your business is in the city, if your S Corp is in the city, the city charges a tax rate of 8.86%, nearly 9% on income. So it zaps much of the S Corporation fund, really. And in fact, while they do save money, you can see over here that they do save money despite the New York City for, you know, tax. I would probably say, you know, most of your clients can stay away from being partnerships or from being S corporations and they can stay partnerships or sole props. Because if you're going to have a choice between paying self-employment tax and a New York City tax, I'd rather pay self-employment tax because at least you're paying into Social Security. So, I mean, to some degree, that argument does make sense. Now, partnerships and sole props, once they start making over $100,000, they start paying a tax called the UBT, uh, which is, it, it's kind of like the, the, the same city tax, but the rate is much lower. And there are credits available to go against the tax. So like I said, partnerships and sole proprietorships have a much have a much better situation in New York City. And I'm I'm probably going to say if you've got clients in New York City, they're going to just pay a ton of tax regardless of of what they do. So let them let them choose what entity they want to be. Outside the city, S corporations still rule inside the city. I don't know that S corps are any more meaningful than any others. And I can tell you from a development perspective, um, we we know that New York City taxes and and Halon and all of that are probably not going to be as popular. So I'm going to tell you that's probably because no one's really doing them nearly as much. And so from a sales perspective, I don't know that you need to either. Um, my advice would probably be to stay away from things in New York City. We can still do them. But I think the complexity of it probably doesn't make it worth it. Anywhere outside of New York City, in regular New York, S Corps are fine. S Corps rock. But uh, inside the city, fairly prohibitive. The New York City could have been the number one, right? But um, I, I wanted to make sure that we knew that it's not New York State. It's New York City that's the problem. Okay, let's go on to uh, our next state here. And it's California. Now, California gets a pretty bad rap because of their very high personal tax rates. Uh, those tax rates apply to any business owner, not just S corporation owners. California is not too bad on the franchise tax side. And LLCs and partnerships have to pay uh, a minimum $800 too. So for our core clients, the S corporation wins for sure. S corps have, have to pay a minimum $800 tax or 1.5% of income, whichever is highest. But as you can see, that number doesn't eclipse $800 until we're way down here. And even at $180,000 of net income, you're at $1,350. Remember, partnerships and, and sole, sole props would have, to, would have to pay this $800, or not sole props, but uh, LLCs that are sole proprietorships or partnerships would have to pay this $800 no matter what too. Even at this level though, it would be 800 instead of 1350. So there's a little bit of a difference, but you can see the savings far outweighs what anything that California would be throwing at it. So the the word in California is S corps are good. S, you'd need to be recommending S corps. You can recommend an LLC as an S corporation. Uh, that's fine, but you're still gonna pay this S corporation tax here not the not the 800 for just the LLC it doesn't it doesn't quite work that way um we're California's good and uh you know we're going to as we go here get get better and better states right so California is definitely in my book of this is one that it's a big state so a lot of you are in it and I would be recommending S Corp. So we should be doing lots and lots and lots of Halon S corporations in California for sure now, next up is Illinois, and Illinois has, you know, it is similar to California, except that Illinois charges a flat 1.5% of net income. It's called a replacement tax. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what, where they get these names, but uh, it, it applies to partnerships, too. So S corporation versus partnership easily wins in Illinois. But if you're a sole proprietorship, you don't have to pay this. 
So we should still be factoring it in our calculations to clients because if they stayed a sole proprietorship, they would have to pay the self-employment tax, but they wouldn't have to pay the Illinois replacement tax. As you can see here, the savings are still massive. So, you know, the, again, the S corporation wins in Illinois. We do a ton of work in Illinois. That is actually, Illinois is actually where I started my firm, Reagan Financial, a long time ago. And I can tell you, Illinois, great, great place for S corporations. You can save a lot of money over 10 years by, by being an S corporation. So, uh, but here's the calculations and here's the kind of the matrix of, different income levels and what the savings should be. And again, use this in your presentations or use this whenever you're pitching clients so that you're using the right savings amount. It's plenty to justify what you're trying to do with bookkeeping fees, that kind of thing. And then this one's a little strange, Louisiana. I wanted to hit Louisiana because there had been some questions about whether Louisiana was good or bad. Uh, as the slide says, if all the shareholders are residents of Louisiana, there's no S Corp tax. But if the shareholders that own part or all of the S corporation are not Louisiana residents, then Louisiana charges a, a tax. Uh, and you, you would, if you really research a lot of states, you would find that's true of many places where if you've got a business that doesn't have shareholders uh, that reside in that state, they're a little worried that they're going to get their money. So they charge the business a tax rather than trying to chase down all those non-residents. And in Louisiana, you could end up paying between 4 and 8% if you have non-resident shareholders. But for most of you, uh, especially those of you who live in Louisiana, your, your owners are going to live there too. And if that's the case, there's no tax and you don't really need to factor Louisiana taxes into anything like that. Make sense? And with that, Louisiana was our last state that we want to talk about. So if, if we find other states that have issues... Uh, we will make sure that we shoot a piece of a slide for them and insert it into this video. We'll keep you up to date if we make changes like that. If we come up with a state, more than likely, actually very likely, we're going to send an email out and say, hey, you know, kind of an alert here. We have a state that's passed some laws that now change the way that we pitch things about S corporations. But that's it for this state video. So you are almost done with accounting two. I will... Uh, I will say that you're, there's no reason to stop now, right? Because you, the end is in sight. So I will see you in the next video and thanks for watching.